About two years ago, I released a video of me making a book-matched Live Edge cherry table. A couple from Washington, D.C. found that video and asked if I could make one for them, too. This is a story about that. Since every tree is different, so are the tables in this style. The slabs I was able to source for this table that were wide enough to fit the client's space had significant curves to them, so the challenge with this build would be to address that. I started by getting the slabs on some sawhorses and rough cutting them to width. I snapped a chalk line and I ripped each slab with a circular saw. Back inside the shop, I needed to flatten the slabs. For this, I used an Amana spoil board surfacing bit that I got from Tools Today. I set it up in my router and and set up a router sled over the pieces. With the sled referencing the dead flat straight 2x4 rails, I like to take light passes over the slabs until the mill marks disappear. Flip it over and repeat. This process is extremely messy and loud, so I suggest wearing a respirator and ear protection and a willingness to get everything in your shop completely covered in dust. In fact, it might be better to do this outside. With the slabs flat, it was time to joint the edges. On the previous table I made, the pieces were too unwieldy to pass over the jointer safely, but this time I set up roller stands on the infeed and outfeed sides and I was able to pass them over the jointer. I must have gotten stronger or smarter somewhere along the way. To join the two slabs, I use a healthy amount of tight bond three. I got a lot of comments on the last table I built about why I didn't use biscuits or dominoes to reinforce the joint. If properly jointed with two inches of long grain to long grain surface area, wood glue is actually stronger than the wood itself and is more than enough for a permanent bond. With the tabletop together, there was a pocket of rot I needed to address. For that, I'm using a penetrating epoxy from today's sponsor, Total Boat. It's a low viscosity epoxy designed to soak into soft and punky wood and actually cure inside the wood, making it hard. Once that was dry and it worked really well, I flipped the top back over and removed some bark that I should have removed before the glue up. Even though the top should be stable as is, I'm a belt and suspenders kind of guy, so I started laying out some butterflies over the gaps at either end. I think this adds a nice visual element as well. I laid some cherry over the gaps and just did a visual assessment of how big they should be, then cut out the blanks at the bandsaw. I can't remember where I first saw this trick, but a quick way of marking a line square to an edge on a piece is to make a small kerf and then use that kerf mark to guide the saw blade. I marked the center line on each piece, then used a shop made eight to one layout tool to mark the edges. I actually posted a video to IGTV on making and using this jig, so be sure to follow me on Instagram for more behind the scenes stuff. Over at the little bandsaw, I cut out the butterflies, then cleaned up the bandsaw marks. You could either use a disc sander like this or clean them up with a chisel. I cleaned up some of the router marks with a sander, then somewhere along the way, I lost the footage of me installing the butterflies. So this footage from a different table I made will have to suffice. I've been using the blue tape and CA glue method lately and with great results. Place blue tape over the gap and on the bottom of the butterfly, apply CA to the butterfly and accelerator to the other and using a sharp marking knife, trace the outline of the butterfly. Route out the bulk of the waste and work back to your lines with a chisel. I like to chamfer the bottom edges of my butterfly in case of any errant waste along the base lines, then pound it in with glue. I use a hand plane to get them close to flush, then finish with a sander. Really nice, tight fit. With the butterflies installed, the clients wanted the gaps to be filled as they'd be using this as a dining table. I did what I've always done in the past and used foil tape to make a reservoir. The difference this time was I was using a different foil tape than I normally use. To fill the gap, I used another Total Boat product, their new Thick Set Epoxy. This epoxy is a casting epoxy with the ability to pour in thicker layers than usually possible. I mixed up a batch and added some charcoal dust to tint the epoxy jet black. Thick Set offers the ability to fill this entire gap in one pour rather than in layers, saving you time, in theory. Problem was, my tape failed. Luckily, I hadn't walked away from the project yet before I noticed I had sprung a leak, so I was able to catch the epoxy in a bucket and pour it elsewhere. Coming back the next day, 
I lined a board with foil tape and screwed it to the underside of the tabletop. I used hot glue as sort of a caulk, though in hindsight I should have used silicone. I poured another batch of thickset and waited. I had a few small leaks here, too, but it set fast enough to dam up the gap so I could come back and top it off later. With epoxy curing, I could turn my attention to the base. Anytime I'm designing anything that needs to be a specific height, where angles are off of 90 or zero, I like to draw it in full scale and take measurements off the drawing. These legs would be an inverted trapezoid with the splay of the leg four degrees off of 90. I'm using two by two square tube steel cut to 43 degrees. I cleaned up the mating surfaces with a grinder and got to welding. I started with tack welds all around the piece and came back to lay full beads down, trying to move around the piece to dissipate heat and manage any warping. The client expressed an interest to being able to remove the top from the base for moving purposes, so we designed the base to be freestanding with a stretcher along the floor to add some solidity. With a day of cutting, grinding, and welding, I was beat. So after flipping the base upside down to finish some welds, I goofed off a little, posted a photo to Instagram, and called it a day. Yeah, hey Max. I thought that's what we talked about, with the stretcher across the bottom. Oh, okay. So you want two separate legs instead of one integral. More labor and materials. All right, talk to you. Bye. The client had been following along with their table build on Instagram and decided they didn't quite like the look of our first design. Now, in the world of custom commissions, your goal is to make the clients love their commission piece. That's how you get referrals and repeat business. So the next day, I refabricated two separate table legs. I was concerned about the racking factor without the stretcher, so I cut some quarter by two and a half inch steel about eight inches long to make some really stout mounting plates. My four month old son was napping right above the metal side of my shop upstairs, so I took the legs outside to grind the welds flush and give the legs a flap disc treatment. I sanded the tabletop, then flipped it over to add my brand and apply a few coats of wiping varnish. I always finish the undersides of tables to try to have both the top and bottom react to any changes in humidity equally. With the top still upside down, I marked where the mounting holes of the legs were. In the last table, I used lag screws to attach the table to the legs, but in the interest of making these removable, we wanted to use threaded inserts. I used a brad point bit to drill the holes I had marked for, then used Total Boat's 2 to 1 epoxy on the threads, and screwed in the inserts using a bolt bottomed out in the bottom of the threads. I want to take this minute to give an extra special thanks to Total Boat for supporting this community and making this video possible. I've been using Total Boat's 2 to 1 for a long time now, and it's become my favorite for applications like this. And right now you can save 20% off of anything on TotalBoat.com using code WMWalker at checkout. On to the finishing process. I coated the steel legs with a spray polyurethane, and I finished the table top with that same wiping varnish. After the first coat was on, my brother-in-law had stopped by the shop, so I put him to work. We flipped the top over and installed the legs, then it was the moment of truth. To make sure I did everything right and my welds hadn't warped. The table was solid. No rocking, no wobble, no racking. I was very relieved. With the table upright, I continued the finishing process and applied five more coats, sanding in between. After a few bumps in the road, this table was done.
awesome. This is awesome. This is awesome, isn't it? Yeah, it looks this awesome. This is beautiful. Yeah. This is really, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> I think it's kind of a cool uh, extra thing that the, the trees came from Montpelier, which was um, James Madison's home. Yeah. Then um, you guys live in D.C., so I thought that was kind of a cool... That's awesome. As always, thanks for watching.